Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to discuss methods for protecting a circuit board from the environment and this applies in general to printed circuit boards but you can take these tips and tricks and use them in uh, other applications as well. This will mostly not be the engineering and scientific way of doing things but more a practical and affordable approach using chemicals that can be bought easily and used at home. If you want to protect your PCB professionally, then you might use conformal coating, you get in touch with the manufacturer that can supply it and then they will advise with the different coatings they can offer and you will usually find clear conformal coating in either a soft um, re-enterable form or a solid coating. Now the soft re-enterable form of conformal coating is used if you need to do measurements or mods later on your product while the solid coating once it's set you can't pierce through it for measurement because if you do that you will break the coating. There is also the method of epoxying the circuit board entirely and that will protect it uh, mechanically as well as from the environment but there is no way to do any measurements or modifications to the circuit after it's done because it's completely covered in hard epoxy. At home, at a hobby level though, we have a few different options that I want to discuss today and uh, these are the methods that I have used so far but there could be others so please Join the discussion in the comments below and let me know if you're using something different and it works. I'm gonna start with the clear nail polish. This is probably the easiest and most common method used by uh, hobbyists to try and prevent moisture and dust from getting on a circuit board. It does have the advantage of being uh, very cheap, less than one dollar for a small bottle like this. It's easy to find and easy to use but it also has some disadvantages that we're going to discuss and I would advise against getting this stuff from your wife's stash because she might be using the expensive stuff and might get upset once she notices it's missing. Now nail var varnish will set pretty fast and uh, become this uh, rather hard uh, clear coating on your circuit board. If you take a closer look you'll notice the nail varnish coating is pretty hard but that doesn't mean we can't pierce this with a pair of sharp probes and do our measurements like I'm showing here it's perfectly possible to pierce it but do take into consideration that there will be some small holes left into the protection coating after you've pierced it with the measurement probes so me uh, moisture and dust could get in uh, at that point. Also nail varnish since it's designed for nails doesn't like the high temperatures so it will be become soft and easy to peel away uh, once you hit it at uh, uh, high temperatures like I did here. Uh, I, I applied heat with my hot air gun at 200 degrees Celsius and I can easily uh, scrape away the, uh, the coating with a pair of tweezers. Even with these disadvantages, nail varnish has its place and will be used occasionally. The next solution I'm gonna show is called PCB varnish and it's likely you'll find this type of product with a similar name but maybe from a different manufacturer. This is for the European uh, market, it's uh, made in Poland by uh, this company so it's relatively easy to find this stuff in Europe. If you're in the US or another continent you might have different uh, brands selling a similar solution. This is basically a coating in the form of a spray. It's easy to apply evenly across the entire circuit board and once it hardens it remains transparent and creates this hard protection layer but still maintains some flexibility that prevents it from cracking if you have some uh, flexing in your PCB. On the can they also say uh, you can solder through this stuff. I haven't tried that but I would imagine it just melts at the point of solder. So this lacquer is a bit more optimized towards our application and this is uh, my go-to solution when I need to protect the PCB from moisture because the way of application in a spray form it also helps get a very even surface even on a already uh, assembled board. I highly recommend you get yourself a can of uh, this stuff and uh, I'll show you why if we, t if we take a closer look at this board you can see there is a nice even layer of protection across the entire board. This special PCB varnish coating is easy to pierce with a pair of sharp multimeter probes but maybe that is also because it has been applied in a thin even layer. 
As you can see, I get the continuity tester to signal pretty fast with minimal effort. Same as with the nail varnish, once you pierce the coating, there will be small openings where moisture and dust could get in. So I would advise using this solution only after the work on the PCB has been finished or maybe spray another layer after you've uh, pierced uh, for measurement. Doing the high temperature test on the PCB varnish lacquer reveals that it's uh, better to use with higher temperature. It has better mechanical stability, better adhesion to the PCB. As you can see here, I'm scraping with a sharp pair of tweezers and um, it's, I feel that it's harder to scrape this thing away than it is than it was with the uh, nail uh, polish. So yeah, this stuff is definitely optimized for use with uh, printed circuit boards. The next solution involves using a UV curable solder mask. This makes a lot of sense because well, solder mask has been used from the beginning of PCB manufacturing to protect the copper. It has great temperature stability, great adhesion, and it's really ideal for protecting some exposed copper or a small modification done to a board. And you can get the UV curable solder mask in a variety of colors. I have green and blue here. Uh, you can find this stuff on AliExpress or eBay. It comes in a syringe form and it's uh, very inexpensive. Then you'll need a uh, UV source of light like uh, this flashlight. You put a drop of uh, this UV solder mask on the on the PCB you shine the UV light for like 30 seconds and the, the stuff will harden to this uh, nice protection layer. I will add some links in the description of the video to both the solder mask and the UV flashlight that I am using. But this stuff also has some limitations for example because it's a pretty liquid it works best on flat surfaces you can't for example coat an entirely assembled PCB in this stuff unless it's very very small SMD components uh, otherwise it's just not practical and you'll not get uh, good results. It works uh, uh, best like I said for flat surfaces like exposed uh, copper on a PCB or very small mods and repair wires. The coating of solder mask is pretty hard so it's next to impossible to try and measure through this stuff. I have a very sharp pair of probes here. These are the Probe Master probes and uh, I can't really pierce through this stuff. It's really hard. At one point I, I can get through but uh, it's, it's really difficult. The UV solder mask it's really strong mechanically and also on the temperature test it has no issues whatsoever. It's very strongly adhered to the PCB and I can only scrape the surface with a pair of sharp tweezers. My next solution involves using this uh, recently discovered uh, silicone adhesive. It's made by uh, this company which uh, it has a rather difficult to pronounce name but it's model number 705, K705 to be more precise and this is transparent silicone adhesive specially for electronics. They claim it's non-conductive, it has good adhesion and good temperature stability. So this is uh, something new to me. I haven't tested this uh, uh, before uh, over longer periods of time to see if it's good long term. But so far I like what I'm seeing. Here's an example where I applied a drop of uh, this stuff. Uh, it's rather soft. You can pierce this with a multimeter probe and do some measurements. And I believe it still uh, maintains a decent amount of protection even after it's been pierced judging by the uh, rubbery feel of the material. This ha also has the advantage that you can use it to secure various elements to a PCB to stop them from flapping in the breeze. It also works as a general purpose silicone adhesive. Like I said I discovered this uh, silicone recently and I've only recently have started using it but I like it very much as you can see uh, I can e easily uh, probe uh, through it and uh, do measurements. It's it's very soft and once you've finished uh, piercing it, it appears like it's resealing itself like one of those re-enterable gels. It also does well with temperature at 200 degrees Celsius. There is no discoloring or any other effects. 
but it's not as strong mechanically uh, with a pair of sharp tweezers you can get in there and rip pieces of, uh, of silicone you, you can get between the silicone and the PCB so mechanically is not as strong but it does have the other advantages that the more mechanically strong solutions don't have I'm also going to show you one last uh, method that I've used in the past to seal PCBs. It involves using hot glue and heat shrink tubing. I don't particularly like this uh, solution, it's pretty messy, uh, but if you don't have any of the other solutions available, uh, it's, it's, it is highly likely that you will have a uh, hot glue gun and some heat shrink around so this is something you would use when nothing else is available you basically drown the PCB in hot glue and then slide the whole PCB inside heat shrink tubing then when you apply heat on the exterior of the heat shrink tubing the hot glue will melt again and flow nicely over the entire PCB and get between the uh, component uh, legs and all, all of those uh, tight spaces uh, because the heat shrink will shrink over the uh, PCB and the hot glue it will kind of force the hot glue to get into all the uh, tiny spaces this kind of works but depends a lot on how well the hot glue melted and flowed to cover everything on the PCB and also depends on the properties of the hot glue which is not really an ideal barrier against water or other liquids so in general I tend to stay away from, from this method and use the others presented above but if nothing else is, uh, is available uh, this might provide some uh, basic level of protection for your PCB. So these are pretty much the methods that I use for uh, protecting my PCBs from the environment. Now I would like to hear some feedback in the comments below. What do you think of the methods I am using and also I would like to hear about other methods to protect the PCBs from the environment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.